My Smart Tech TV. My name is Jess Bainbridge and I'm your host. And today I'm joined by Peter Runcie, who's the Smart Cities theme leader at the New South Wales Smart Sensing Network. Welcome, Peter. Hi, Jess. How are you? Very good. So, Peter, tell us a little bit about what you do um, and your role. Um, so I'm working with the New South Wales Smart Sensing Network. So this is a non-profit innovation network established by the chief scientist in the state about 2016. Uh, and the idea is that it brings universities together uh, and taps into that, um, you know, that excellent research resource to be able to solve some of the bigger issues that we're facing in New South Wales and in Australia, and in some cases broader, broaden that into, into the world. So um, I'm representing New South Wales Smart Sensing Network. And particularly today, um, I wanted to talk about a project that we are running called Open Air. It's to do with air quality monitoring. Amazing. I was going to say, tell us about that because that's a really interesting project. Okay. Um, we had some discussions with lots of local governments in the last couple of years around, around sensing, um, around IoT, and some of the things that they might like to do with those. We know that there's a lot of a lot of interest in IoT and sensing, low cost sensing particularly, but uh, there's not a lot of experience within local the local government sector, and we're finding elsewhere as well in how to really use these low cost sensors effectively. So, you know, what brought this to a head, I guess, was a bushfire season that we had a couple of years ago, where uh, a lot of the councils we spoke to in New South Wales said that they wanted to be able to inform their communities about air quality. Uh, so they could say, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's dangerous today. So the library is going to be extended at the opening hours. The library might be extended a bit longer. So if you're feeling vulnerable, then go to the library. We've got air conditioning there, for example. So there's lots of different, um, you know, air quality issues which communities face, and councils are the face of the community. They're there to, to help the community, uh, and they want to use sensing and data analysis and those sorts of things to be able to get some data-driven, you know, evidence-based decision-making um, in place around their policies and some of the things they do. So we uh, went to all the councils in the state through LG New South Wales. We sent a survey out saying, you know, do you have an issue with air quality? What sorts of issues do you, do you have? And we had quite a lot of respondents come back and say, uh, yes, we have air quality issues. Uh, bushfire smoke is a big one. Uh, Transportation-related uh, pollution could be trains, for diesel trains, cars, trucks, airports uh, was an issue. Urban heat is becoming an issue um, in many places and a big concern. And there was others. So there's, we, we found there was quite a lot of variation in some of the other areas around agricultural, um, you know, cane, fa uh, cane farm burning, uh, dust from erosion, construction sites and dust from those sites. So there's quite a range of different um, areas of concern and, and, and areas that people want to look at. So the next question for councils was how confident are you in using these sensors to be able to help? Uh, and a lot of them said, well, we'd like to, but we really don't have the skills and the ability to choose the right sensor, uh, know how to install the sensors, know how to operate them, uh, know how to manage the data. Uh, we don't know how to do the analytics that's required. We don't know how to interpret what we're seeing. So um, the project Open Air started um, as a result of that. Touching on that and, you know, talking about how, like I said, you know, IoT, these sensors are available, but many organisations don't know how to use the technology. How did you go about inspiring, educating, sort of rolling that out um, with these organisations? Yeah, so we went back to them and said, look, um, would you be interested in participating in a project where we can develop some best practices for local governments to, to use these sensors? And is that available? Is that in like a, a, um, a white paper or a document or is that, can people access that information? Yeah, so this is a project underway right now. It started in January. It'll go through to the end of June next year. So 18 month project. We, um, so we, we, we came up, you know, we, we went to the councils, 15 councils said we, we, we want to participate in this project. Um, a, a few others said we'd like to, but you know, we, but we can't at the moment. So we've got 15 councils. We went to the New South Wales Department of Planning and Environment, um, the Atmospheric Sciences Group, who they produce the um, air quality um, data that we currently see on the New South Wales government website, and they operate air quality monitoring stations around the state. Uh, and they said this is of, of interest to them because they want to be able to use low cost sensors in addition to the expensive ones that they have scattered around the state already. So 
they're sponsoring the project. Uh, and together we went to um, the Digital Restart Fund in the New South Wales government um, through the Smart Places team uh, to secure some, um, some additional funding for the project. So the project st started there. Uh, we then went to the New South Wales Smart Sensing Network's member universities and said, we need skills here. We need some skills in air quality science. So how do we actually interpret data to do with air quality and make, and from a health point of view or from a, uh, other, you know, other perspectives, uh, we need some in expertise around sensing and sensing technology. We need some expertise around ICT infrastructure, the data management, data sharing, cybersecurity, privacy, all those sorts of things. Uh, we also need some skills around business case development because we know that a lot of the councils struggle to sometimes you know, either develop a business case to justify a project or build a longer term business case to say, you know, we want to do some monitoring with a sensor, but how do we keep that going long term? What's the business case to make it worthwhile and sustainable as, as a sort of a, a data source for the council? So um, business case skills. Uh, and then some specific skills around things like urban heat. So we've got uh, in this project, we've got participation from uh, University of Sydney, University of New South Wales, Western Sydney University, uh, Australian National University. Um, I'm missing one, UTS and UTS in Sydney. So, and a couple of SMEs as well. So we've got some uh, SME consultants involved um, providing uh, additional help around things like community engagement and those sorts of things. So it's quite a large scale project and it has to be this way because it's a complex topic. Uh, and so the idea of the project is we will help councils, so the, the councils participating, work through their own projects in their own communities and we'll provide some support to them and some advice and guidance. Uh, and at the same time, we'll be developing best practices in all of these areas that we can then publish out to the broader community. So all councils and indeed anybody actually will have access to a whole raft of resources to help them with this sort of project. And just um, touching there, you know, once those skills have been, been implemented, people know how to read the data. What can you learn from the data? What types of things can come out from this? Yeah, so it's interesting. That, so the councils have things that they can do. So, you know, if it's bushfires, they can't necessarily put a bushfire out. But as I said, you know, that if with armed with data, they can, they can, um, you know, they can provide information to the community, and they can provide things like I just said. You know, they can say, okay, we can open, extend opening hours at the library, for example. If it's to do with um, uh, open space and public spaces, councils can use data to say, you know, we'd like to build a park. If it happens to be near a freeway. Is that safe? You know, so using sensors, they can measure that and say, actually, no, it is going to be safe to do that. So. They can make these planning decisions, localised planning decisions, based on evidence. Uh, and they can also use these low-cost sensors to then uh, engage with people like the EPA, if they need to, who can bring into play um, very, uh, you know, very expensive but much more accurate sensors to, um, to check on things like compliance of, of construction dust is a good example there. So there's things councils can do with this data. Uh, and uh, the fact that they're low cost sensors mean it's more accessible to them. Uh, the, the other aspect of low cost sensors is the data quality um, is different to the, to the standard sensors which are rolled out by the New South Wales government. And part of the project then is understanding you know, how to use the data from the low cost sensors uh, in conjunction with the data from the more expensive reference grade sensors that are installed. It's making it more accessible for people that might not usually have also been able to access this kind yeah, of that's right. yeah. you know you think in the past i wonder there's probably been some very costly mistakes made you know parks built in the wrong areas and what that would mean for the for communities and so it does definitely make a really big impact yeah. in terms of um people who are li listening in terms of following the project and you know what what's the sort of best way to do that um is it sort of on your website? Yeah, where's the, the project being sort of tracked? Yeah, we are, we are establishing a website. So, yeah. um, you know, we can let you know what the URL is when that's up and running and then um, anybody can go to that and, and see, you know, what the, how the project's going and also start accessing some of these materials that we're going to be putting up there. That's fantastic. Well, Peter, have I, I mean, like I said, we wanted to really talk about just the open air project today. I know you do a whole bunch of other stuff, but just in regards to that, is there anything that I've missed, anything else that you kind of wanted to talk about uh, with relation to that? Um, I guess a couple of other things here would be that, you know, the, you know I mentioned the New South Wales government's interested in, in this project and what we're looking 
here at is as part of their work is to see, you know, can the data from the low cost sensors be used in conjunction with the more expensive ones. Mm -hmm. But it also, you know, as part of this project would potentially allow uh, communities to collect data on air quality and in, in fact environmental sensing more generally because the, the principles are very similar whether it's air quality, water quality, noise, um, all of which are concerning to communities uh, and use that data to prepare um, very localised um, data products such as localised air quality forecasting. So there's some other things going on in the New South Wales government here using this data to provide more value, not just to the participating councils, but also across the state, which is which is really good. That's great. Well, yeah, Peter, thank you so much for your time. It sounds like an incredible project. It's really um, you know, exciting to see how it kind of pans out and we'll definitely link any information so people can follow along. Um, yeah, any kind of parting word, anything, anything else that you kind of wanted to discuss before we, we wrap up today? No, look, I think that there's other things we can talk about. We could do that another day. There's, there's all Absolutely. sorts of projects. So for now, I think, you know, this is um, exciting. So I encourage everyone to, to stay tuned and, and see how this progresses. That's great. And just on that, and you know, that excitement, what is the, the part of it that is the most exciting to you personally that you're finding with the project? It's, it's the level of participation by the project. So it's, as I said, it's a complex project with lots of different parties, but, you know, having the councils actually involved in the project and working on their own issues um, rather than you know universities and, and government saying here's how you do things um, it's we're doing it with the council so that's exciting mm -hmm. it's the way we're doing the project not just the um you know what we're actually working on why as well yeah that's great brilliant well look thanks so much for your time um like i said we'll link everything in the show notes and um, best of luck with it and yeah keep us posted with how it all goes